welcome everyone. My name is Jaylene and on behalf of our Wellsprings Youth Group, we would love to take this time and opportunity to thank you all so much for joining us this evening. Tonight is our Wellsprings Youth Group service, which will be led by Alisana Sunia, who is our youth group president. Although we cannot gather together physically, and I know it's been a long, hard journey, but we just want to give this opportunity to, to thank God for giving us this platform so that we can still gather together in spirit and still join together so we can all just gather and worship together as a family. So thank you so much for the opportunity. I hope you enjoy the service. Get ready to worship together and, and join in spirit so that we can all give praise and thanks to our Heavenly Father above. Let's get to it. There is no better place to be than in the presence of God. So let's worship him this morning. So there is a place that I love to dwell and it's the presence of my Father. All the hosts of heaven gather, worship him, bowing down before him. Let's lead everybody team. Said there is a place There is a place That I love to dwell That I love to dwell And it's the presence of my Father All the hosts of heaven gather Worship Him Bowing down before Him I think you get it, let's sing it from home, let's sing this Said there is a place There is a place That I love to dwell That I love to dwell It's the presence of my Father All the hosts of heaven gather Worship Him Bowing down before Him We're going to switch it up just a little bit Sing along with us. Said there is a place there is a place that I love to wait. That I love to wait. It's the presence of my Father. All the hosts of heaven gathered, worship Him, bowing down before Him. Let's try another one. Said there is a place. There is a place that I love to sing. That I love to sing. It's the presence of my Father, all the hosts of heaven gather, worship Him, bowing down before Him. Let's switch it up one more time. Said there is a place, there is a place, that I love to dance, dance from home. I love to dance. It's the presence of my Father. All the hosts of heaven gather, worship Him, bowing down before Him. Sing hallelujah all together. Hallelujah. 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 Worship Him, worship Him, bowing down before Him. 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 Worship Him
bowing down before Him. How many of you are grateful to know that we serve a God who not just only makes promises, but He's a man of His word? Let's praise Him this morning. All things are possible. for his continuous blessings. I am grateful to God for the life he has blessed me. I am grateful to God for all that he has done for us. I am thankful to God for his love and his protection over us. I am grateful to God for your many blessings. And I am grateful to God for his endless love and grace. God, I am so grateful for your mercy, grateful for your faithfulness, and grateful for your protection upon us each and every day. God, I am thankful for the life that you have given me. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for God's grace. Thank you, Lord, for God's grace. Amen. God, I want to thank you for your never-ending love. God, forgive us for our sins. God, I'm thankful for everything you do for us. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings and your protection on all of us. Thank God, I'm thankful for my mommy, my daddy, and my chicken nuggets. I thank God for his mercy. Father God, I'm thankful for your word. And I ask him for guidance throughout these times of uncertainty. 
Lord, thank you for blessing us with another beautiful day to our lives and protecting us last night as we slept or as we were working. I pray that may your love and your peace reign in our hearts during these trouble and challenging times. God, I ask that you please help us to show your grace and your mercy to others. God, please bless the homeless. Father God, we ask that you watch over us. God, I'm thankful for family. And I ask you, God, to bless the world that we live in. God, I ask you to please protect everybody who's still working. God, I ask you to please continue to grow within us and minister to our hearts. God, I ask you to please help us in our spiritual growth. I ask that you continue to protect the essential workers in grocery stores and especially in hospitals while they're putting themselves on the line and risking their lives to help provide for the needs of others. I ask that you continue to guide us through our spiritual journey and that when we're feeling alone or down, you are always there. And I ask you that may you help us with our spiritual walk throughout the rest of this year. I ask may you help heal this world. We pray for spiritual guidance. Lord, I ask you to help and heal those who were affected in this time of need. God, we ask that you please comfort those who lost their loved ones. And in your holy name we pray, amen. Here I am to worship, here I am to 
to bow down Here I am to say that You're my God You're all together lovely All together worthy All together wonderful to me The God who is and is and is to come We invite your presence into this place And sing you our Alpha Our Alpha And Omega We worship When words fail to escape When we are surrounded, we are surrounded by your love So we sing Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. All together, let's raise it. Oh, we cry out to you. Oh, to
at your name Fear must bow down Anxiety must flee At the sound of your name So we bring this offering and friends watching from around the world. My name is Sana, and I am super honored and super grateful to be able to share the word of the Lord with you this evening. From wherever you may be watching, we're so grateful that you could tune in from wherever it may be. You could be from somewhere all around the country. You could be even in a different day. We're so grateful and honored because we have this opportunity in this platform to be able to minister to you through this platform called social media, and we're so honored and so grateful. So without further ado, I just want to hop into it. I don't want to take too much of your time. I'm seated right now, which is kind of a telltale sign that I'm about to do a little bit more teaching than I am preaching, and, and, and God has been ministering something and stirring in my spirit so um, clearly that I want to demarcate that and let you know about it. So today I want to talk for just a few minutes on the subject, the revelation in repetition, the revelation in repetition. If you could type that in the chat, please do so. The revelation in repetition. But let's pray first. Lord God, your servant here is in this position seeking your help. I'm seeking your guidance. I'm seeking your wisdom. I'm seeking your discernment. So as I continue to preach your gospel and let others know about who you are, help me to communicate this message as effectively as I possibly can. This message is just vanity, is just spoken word. If your word is not breathed into if you don't breathe life into this message it will all be for nothing so i ask that you decrease me you be increased may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thy sight O lord my rock and my redeemer amen all righty the revelation in repetition so have you ever had a song on repeat like a song that you just absolutely love to play in the car or just when you're out and about this is your jam so if I was in your car and I decided to accidentally play the song and it came up this would be your song right Do you have a song it seems as if for me at least every summer I have like this go-to song that I go to and it's like stuck on replay as I'm going throughout my day and this year that song was a song called Most Beautiful by Maverick City Music. And it was a song that God used to just minister to my soul. Now, I'm not saying it has to be a gospel song. It could be a secular song. But is there a song that you have that you've kind of held on to that you put on repeat when you're in the car and nobody else is around? You're unashamedly singing this song. Even if your voice isn't the greatest, you're always ready to sing this song. See, because I want to talk about repetition. See, because even uh, songs that we repeat, was something that's not just current with us 
uh, people who are in this generation, but it also resonated back in the day. You see, in Psalm number 150, there is a word or phrase that continues to be repeated. So I want to take you to Psalm 150 really quickly before we hop in to uh, the meat and potatoes of this message. In Psalm number 150, this is the last psalm, and it's not clearly written who the author of this particular psalm was, but it says this, and here's what it reads. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You notice the theme in that particular passage? The theme was that every single verse, the term praise the Lord, was used. It was used as a repetitive mechanism. Now, in this particular passage, the words praise him or praise the Lord was used 13 times. I was doing a little bit of research, and and I read that biblical scholars say that the reason why praise him or praise the Lord is used 13 times is because this was like the 1300th anniversary anthem for the people of Israel. So for 13 years, 1300 years of the faithfulness of God, for every hundred years, the people of Israel wrote praise him for so many things that God had done for them. So they're repeating the praises of God for the repetition of the faithfulness of God to them, right? And, and, and repetition is something that I've, I've, I've heard about psychologists say, because we as humans love patterns. We love symmetry in the way that we live our lives. And so if we see repetition, we enjoy it because it's, it's, it's symmetry in our brains. And symmetry is something that we enjoy. So we love this thought of repetition. And it also goes to even our physical nature, right? People who love to get in shape love routines. They love regimens. They love repeating a workout over and over and over again because they know that it's getting them somewhere. Um, There's also repetition littered all throughout our lives, but also in Scripture because God repeats himself. It says in Scripture, fear not. The phrase fear not is used in Scripture over 365 times. You know what's significant about the number 365? It's 365 days in a year. So I was in a Bible study one time, and the person that was there said, fear not is used 365 times to represent that every day there is something to be fearful of, but we serve a God who causes us to be fearless in the middle of fear-based situations. So we should not fear because God calls us not to fear every single day. The word praise is used 200 times in Scripture. You know, in the a uh, story of Samuel in the Old Testament for all of my people who went to vacation Bible school or Bible, Bible studies throughout your, your young age. Um, in the story of Samuel, God calls Samuel. He says, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel gets up and goes to Eli because he thought the call of God was from Eli. And Eli says, nope, go back to bed. And Samuel goes back and Eli calls him back to bed. And he goes for a third time. And Eli says, nope, the next time that happens, if it happens again, say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening because we see that repetition is also something that God does. So we see that repetition is not just something that our brains enjoy, not just something that was used in antiquity, not just something that God used to Samuel, but it's also relevant in every single situation that we live in. Your life is dictated by the decisions that you choose to repeat. And today I want to show you that there is power in the things that you repeat. There, there is power in the things that God repeats over your life, but there is also power, and here's the negative part, there is also power in the things that you let others repeat over your life. So I want to share that with you, and today I want to take us in a journey about a man whose life was full of repetition, even though if you read this passage, you find out that the word repetition or repeat is never used in this man's story. But repetition is a central theme in understanding this man's story. 
So I want to turn your attention to our main passage for this evening, and it's found in Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. And the reason why I'm sitting down is because I'm going to take it slow. We're going to sit in this. I, I hope you have your Bible available to you. Think of this as kind of like a Bible study. I'm having conversation with you, and I want you to dialogue with me too, okay? Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52, and my passage heading says in the NIV version, blind Bartimaeus receives his sight. So we're going to start slow. It says in verse 46, then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with the large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside, begging. Is it, you notice something right from the gate of this passage. It says, then they came to Jericho. What's so significant about Jericho for anybody who went uh, to, to Sunday school as a kid? Jericho is the place where the Israelites marched around seven times and blew their trumpets seven times and the walls came down because it was a fortified city and God had instructed them to do so. And when they did it, the walls of Jericho came down, right? There's repetition in there right from the get. We understand about the repetition of what the Israelites did around the city of Jericho, around the walls of Jericho. There's the first instance of repetition. And it says, as Jesus and his disciples, together with the large crowd, were leaving the city, notice, Jesus and his disciples were preparing to leave a city. Remember how Jesus and his, and his disciples and the crowds that were following them were essentially nomads. This was a repeated thing for them. They would go to a city. Jesus would heal people. Jesus would teach people. Jesus would inspire people. And then he would leave the city and go to the next city. And he would repeat this process time after time after time after time again. So we see repetition in the city of Jericho and the significance of what happened in Jericho. But we also see how Jesus did, rep uh, he did a repetitive work when he went with his disciples from one city to the next city to the next city. You see the pattern of repetition here? And it doesn't end there. Watch this, watch this. It says, as they were leaving a city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. So we got blind man begging Bartimaeus. You notice, the, you notice what, I, what I did intentionally there? Blind begging man Bartimaeus. Blind begging Bartimaeus. You, you ever heard of the term alliteration? It's an English term, which means that you repeat the first letter of consecutive words, at least two words. So we got blind begging Bartimaeus. You notice that I repeated the letter B. There's repetition even in the condition of Bartimaeus. And check out Bartimaeus' name. Literally, his name is Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus. He was Timaeus Jr., meaning that he was a replica of his father. He shared the same name. The repetition of his father's name was repeated in Bartimaeus. If you ever name your kid Junior, which I know some people who've named their kid Junior, you are expecting that your child is going to carry on your legacy. You have high expectations of what your child is. You want your child to be the best of the best, the top notch, the what is it? The bee's knees. Whatever cool terms we have to describe our children, that's, you wouldn't name your child Junior if you do not expect that your child is going to do some amazing things. So I bet when Bartimaeus was born, Timaeus thought to himself, this is my son. My son is going to live an amazing life. And then as soon as Bartimaeus was born, he was born blind. He was born blind. And I find it so interesting that it says, in my little heading for my passage, it says, blind Bartimaeus receives his sight. Because Bartimaeus did not, became known, did not become known as Timaeus' son, but became known as blind Bartimaeus. I feel like that's kind of that's sad because Bartimaeus was not known for his ability, but Bartimaeus was known for his problem. Bartimaeus was known for his condition. Think of it as like, Somebody who's named Toothless Tommy or, or uh, what's, a, what's another word? Let me, let me think of one. Let me think of one. You can think of one, too. Um, let's see. see, see. Uh, stumbling Stacy or Clumsy Chloe or, um, I don't know. We can think of a whole bunch of names with alliteration, obviously. But Bartimaeus was somebody who struggled with that identity because he had to carry on the legacy of his father 
but he was born blind. And because he was born blind, it must have been such a disappointment, so much so that when we encounter Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10, he is living as a roadside blind beggar. Isn't that so unfortunate that Bartimaeus finds himself in this predicament? Not only is he known for his condition, but Bartimaeus' life is marked by an endless, seemingly endless cycle of sad repetition. You see, it says that when Jesus encounters Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus was on a roadside begging. So that was probably Bartimaeus' cycle of life. Bartimaeus woke up in the morning, sat by the road, blind as he was, begging. He went to bed, got up in the morning, sat by the road, blind as he was, begging. The next morning, got up, sat by the road, blind as he was, begging. This was the repetition of the cycle of Bartimaeus' life. And I feel like it's so sad because I feel like there are so many people who are living in their lives in a similar condition to Bartimaeus. You're going through life. You're just going through the motions. And it seems as if you're just going along. You have no purpose for life. It seemed as if Bartimaeus was going throughout his life begging for something. There was something that was missing in Bartimaeus' life. Begging was not just a term that was used for him begging for money. He was begging for something more than that. Bartimaeus needed something to happen. He needed something to break up the monotony that was the miserable existence of his life. And he lived in that miserable existence thinking, is this all that life has to offer? If God is good, why does this have to happen? Every day I'm repeating the same cycle over and over and over and over again. Am I speaking to somebody right now who's living a monotonous life? You're doing the same thing over and over and over again and over again, but it feels like you're not getting anywhere. It seems as if you're working and working and working and working and working and not enough money is ever coming your way. You feel like you're serving and serving and serving and serving and serving, but not receiving anything. You keep on trying and trying and trying and trying, but you never get anything in return. Bartimaeus lived in existence where he woke up every morning, sat on the side of a road, blind as he was, begging. You see, this year for all of us, COVID and and the year 2020 has been a year that has come to break up the monotony of everything that we've ever been doing. Those of you who loved going to the gym and that was your routine, gyms had to shut down for some period of time. Those of you who love sports, Sports had to shut down for some period of time. Those of you who had industry jobs, your industry job may have come to a close because there were so many interruptions that happened to break up the monotony, break up the the staleness of everyday life. And Bartimaeus would have loved the year 2020 because Bartimaeus was like, I need something crazy to happen in my life because I'm tired of going through the same thing over and over and over again. So for those of you who love surprises, I bet that you have loved this year of 2020. You have enjoyed what this year has brought to you. But those of us, like myself, who love to plan, who love to get things done, who love to have everything in order before we do something, it has come to change the entire trajectory of our entire year, and it has been frustrating. You see, Bartimaeus wanted something to change so bad because he had this repetitive nature of doing the same thing but getting no result and it was the same thing every single day until Jesus showed up and Jesus showed up to change this man's life I remember uh, I remember I was talking about how Jesus shows up and changes thing I was I was thinking about how back in the day I was talking with a friend of mine and I used to have an iPod shuffle y'all remember what an iPod shuffle is so an iPod shuffle was an was a little Apple device where I could not see what song was up next I could guess what song was going to come up next but I didn't always necessarily know what song was going to come up next because I would press shuffle 
So, 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 I'm going to put this up. Bartimaeus lived his entire life. I'm, I'm on my Apple Music right now. Don't at me. Apple, don't, don't, uh, don't copyright me. So, 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 so Bartimaeus lived his entire life on repeat. The same cycle over and over. Waking up in the morning, sitting on the side of the road, blind as he was, begging. Every day, the same song over and over and over again. He was on repeat. But Jesus came, and when God shows up, here's what happens. When God shows up, he shuffles things around. When God shows up, things start to change that were the same every single year that you've been in your existence. Bartimaeus had lived the same existence for quite a while, and when God showed up, he starts to shuffle things around. When God starts to show up, things start to move into place. When God shows up, he breaks up the monotony of everything that you're going through because he wants to reveal himself in a way that you have never seen him before. And so God is, is, is not a, he's a God who remains the same. God never changes, but his methodology and the way that he causes things to work together for our good, it changes the more that we get to know him. And so when Jesus showed up in Bartimaeus' life, Bartimaeus did not know that Jesus was going to show up that day. But when he did, he thought to himself, maybe God is going to do something for me. This could be my very last opportunity. I've gone to the doctor. I've gone to visit people who turned their back on me. I went and saw people who said they would help me but stabbed me in the back. I went and tried to consult my family and they left me here. I thought I was going to be my father's legacy. But let me check this out. Let me see if this Jesus can come and shuffle things up in my life and start to really produce a change in my life that I would have never seen coming and so it says in scripture that Bartimaeus does something very 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 simple verse 47 it says when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth he shouted Jesus son of David have mercy on me he thought to himself, this could be my opportunity to go from being blind to being able to see. And so, so I've been trying to reach out to all of these people who could not help me. But if I get connected to Jesus, maybe there's something in Jesus that could unlock and break the monotony of this terrible existence where I'm living to beg. Maybe I'll go from begging to breaking through. Maybe I'll go from begging to being broken of my bondage. Maybe I'll go from begging to be somebody that can be used to be a blessing to somebody else. Maybe my testimony could speak to somebody else. Let me try to get connected to this Jesus guy and see if it doesn't change anything in my life. And my encouragement to you is that when God shows up in your life, attach to him, yell out for him, because the thing that you may be looking for might be found in Jesus. The thing that you've been seeking for your entire life, the validation that you've been longing for, the blessing that you've been longing for, the love and affirmation that you've been longing for, when Jesus shows up, that could be your moment to encounter the goodness of God in your life. And so Bartimaeus encounters Jesus and he says, this could be my chance. If God is really a God who shuffles, I'm going to yell out to the top of my lungs, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And guess what happens when he, when he says this? He says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I didn't yell at that time because I don't want my voice to give out. He says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And it says, it says, it says, it says, it says, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet many rebuked him and told him to be quiet you got to be careful for people who say they want your best interests and they actually don't because what happened is as soon as Bartimaeus longed for his breakthrough and said Jesus son of David have mercy on me people told him to be quiet Oh, Jesus has more important people to attend to than you, Bartimaeus. You're in the way of Jesus. Jesus has a place to be. Jesus has people to heal, not including you. You're not in, on his itinerary. Jesus has. Jesus needs to speak to me. You need to wait in line, Bartimaeus. You, no, no, no. Jesus is here for me. He's not for you, Bartimaeus. No, no, no. Jesus doesn't have time for people like you who are blind and beggars. Why don't you go help yourself? Why don't you go try to get a job? Why don't you try to do something, Bartimaeus? Why don't you go find your father? That's what people probably said. It doesn't necessarily say what they said to him, but it says that people rebuked 
Bartimaeus. They told him to be quiet. I, I know my, my mom's going to watch this. Mom, please forgive me for what I'm about to say, okay? People, I, I'm, I would never say this if, if it wasn't for emphasis, okay? People were telling Bartimaeus, shut up. Shut up, Bartimaeus. You don't deserve what Jesus came for. You are not deserving. You are not worthy. God, Jesus didn't come for people like you. He came for people like me. Now, he didn't come for people like you, Bartimaeus. You need to wait in line. You need to shut your mouth, and you need to leave him alone. And imagine if Bartimaeus would have listened to the opinions of what people said to him the first time. You better be careful of the people who try to shut down your dreams. Oftentimes when people try to shut down your dreams, it's because they see an inadequacy in themselves and want to bring you down alongside with them. And they tell Barnabas, be quiet. The Savior did not come for you. And Barnabas, I love what Barnabas does. Something very, very simple. It says in the second part of verse 48, he says, But he shouted all the more, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He didn't listen to what the crowd said. He said, I am desperate for this. I need breakthrough. I've been sitting here for so long, begging for so long. Now I'm not going to beg anymore, but I'm going to start crying out to God and see that God will not work on my behalf. He said, I don't care if you shout me down. I don't care if you yell at me. I need it today. I am sick and tired of this cycle of living my entire life in vanity. And Bartimaeus says, if this Jesus guy can really change situations like y'all all say he can, why can he not do the same for me let me try to repeat a new cycle let me go from begging to starting to cry out for my blessing maybe i should get connected to this jesus guy because if he can really do what you said he can do then i can put it to the bank then i know that if he can bring sight to the blind to other people what's to stop him from doing it for me and i'm here to tell you what's to stop god from doing it for you if you don't cry out to god god knows what you need but if you don't cry out to him that, does, that may show that you're not desperate enough. And he was sick and tired of being sick and tired, just like the man who had been an invalid in the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. And Jesus said, do you want to be well? And he said, every time I try, it doesn't work. But things start to shift and change when Jesus gets in the midst of a situation. And, and, and I'm here to tell you that the enemy wants you to be in a cycle of pain the enemy wants to see you in a cycle of doubt the enemy wants to see you in a cycle of bitterness the enemy wants to see you in a constant cycle where you're going round and around and around and around and nothing's changing and then you quit on god but when jesus actually shows up if you will allow the presence of god into your home If you will allow the presence of God into your situation, if you will allow the presence of God to manifest itself most clearly in your life, things will start to change. And as soon as Bartimaeus did that, he experienced the power of God. See, see, um, I was talking about repeating. See, because Bartimaeus was sick and tired of the old song, waking up in the morning, sitting on the side of the road, and begging as blind as he was, waking up every day repeating the same old song, same old chorus, same old chorus, same old chorus. And this time he was determined, I'm not going to start begging anymore. I'm singing a new chorus. I'm singing a new song. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. I was going to try something new. I was going to try to sing a new song. I was going to sing a new chorus, and I was going to repeat that chorus until I got my breakthrough. I was going to repeat that chorus until I got my blessing. I was going to repeat the chorus until I see the goodness of the Lord while in the land of the living. I was going to try a new chorus. I was going to try a new song, and Bartimaeus was going to continue singing that new song that was, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. It reminds me of uh, there was somebody that I knew who uh, over this quarantine period stopped watching our worship services. And somebody asked that person, why did you stop watching our worship services? And this person said, I stopped watching our worship services because the worship team repeats themselves too much. Literally what this person said, I do not watch church 
because the worship team repeats themselves too much. And me being one of the worship leaders on our team, I was offended. I was offended because I thought to myself, I intentionally put these repetitions in there. I repeat the chorus on purpose. I don't just do it for just because I have nothing to fill space with. I do it because it's intentional. I do it because I want to glorify God. And so I, I was offended, and I was like, dang. I feel like it was a righteous kind of anger. It got me upset. And, and, and I thought to myself, well, 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 I'm just, I don't, what, should I address this? Should I talk to this guy about this? Because it, it, is, it is not okay what that person said. And then, and then I sat and meditated for a little bit, and God told me, were you doing it for him, or were you doing it for me? Because if he says those things about worship to me, it's not you that he's offending, it's me. And, 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 and what, what God was telling me is that you don't worship for other people. So when I worship God, I'm not worshiping so that you can give me validation. I'm not worshiping so that you can give me a pat on the back and say you did a good job. I'm not worshiping so that you said, man, you did a great job with that arrangement. Keep it up. I don't do it for that. I do it because God is good. I do it because he did something for me. I do it because he's made a way in my life time after time again. I do it because I've seen the goodness of the Lord while in the land of the living. I do it because God has done so much for me that I have nothing to do but praise him. And yet, so many people are willing to repeat praises for rappers, but not willing to repeat praises for God. These same people who will get mad at us for worshiping God and singing hallelujah 10 times will be the same people who sit in their cars and rap, jump man, jump man, jump man, that boy's up to something. You'll repeat jump man five times, but I can't sing hallelujah five times. You'll repeat the last time that I checked before every line of a rap song, but I can't sing glory to God. I can't sing hallelujah. I can't say the name of the spirit. I can't say the name of God. I can't say Jesus and yell out loud because, because I repeat myself. I would rather repeat myself for somebody who did something for me than repeat myself for somebody who has done absolutely nothing in my life. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm getting, I'm getting animated, okay? You can hear the shakiness of my voice because I'm passionate about praise i'm passionate about making sure that god is glorified in my life and so if i live life not doing anything but being a servant of god and worshiping him with all that i have let all that has breath praise the lord then that's how i know that i will be effective in this season of my life because i live life as a worshiper and if i don't do anything else i want to be somebody who worships god with all that i have and so it got me thinking it got me thinking a lot of things, but, th but this whole interaction and hearing about these things got me thinking about something else, too. You see, in Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, John experiences the kingdom of heaven, and he sees in a revelation heaven. And what happens is in Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, you can put it on the lower third, John sees a revelation of heavenly creatures that have eyes all over them. And the entire day, it says day and night, all they do is sing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. All day they do this. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. So, 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 so to that person who said that, this, here's my response. If I, if you, don't, you can tune out everything I say, but I want you to listen to this. If you don't like repetitive worship you may not like heaven very much now, i'm not saying you're not going to heaven never would i ever judge if you're going to heaven but i'm saying you may not like it because when we get to heaven that's all we're going to be doing so pardon me if i'm out here saying glory because all i'm doing is getting getting choir practice in for heaven i'm just preparing myself so that when i meet my creator I can praise him for every single time I've seen him do something for somebody else. I can praise him for every time I've said a prayer and he's answered it. I can praise him for every single time I have seen him move in ways that I would have never been able to see any other God move because there is nobody beside my God. And he alone is worthy of all of my praise. Goodness gracious. And Bartimaeus was sick and tired of singing the same song over and over again, waking up in the morning, sitting on the roadside, 
blind as he was, begging and thought, if I could get connected to Jesus, I might be able to sing a new song. I may be able to hug my family again. I might be able to get a job. I might be able to have a hope and a future. I may be able to see things. I may be able to live the life that I've always wanted. But how do I do that? Because I got connected to the person who gives me a new song, a song at night. It reminds me of Paul when he was in prison with Silas. And at midnight, they were praising and singing and singing the same songs over and over and over again and praying to God. It was a constant thing. And you know what happened? When they were praised and they prayed, they received God's power. When they prayed and they praised over and over and over again, you don't like repetitive worship, they received power. And there was an earthquake that allowed every single prisoner in the prison to be set free. And Bartimaeus did not know that him repeating the shout when everybody told him to be quiet would be the very thing that unlocked his ability to see. So what happens is Bartimaeus goes and he's a, <laughs> he says, son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 49, Jesus stopped. Why did Jesus stop? Because Jesus knew how bad Bartimaeus wanted to break up this monotony of everyday life. He knew that a breakthrough was in store for Bartimaeus. So Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called. The same people who yelled at Bartimaeus, rebuked him, and told him to be quiet were the same people that called the blind man. And here's their tone. They go from yelling at him and telling him to shut up to, cheer up, cheer up, cheer up, on your feet. He's calling you. Cheer up, cheer up, on your feet. He's calling you. You see how they switch up? See, Bartimaeus gets, gets, gets a little bit of attention. Bartimaeus gets noticed a little bit by Jesus. And people start to switch up. Is that not the same with our everyday life? Once somebody starts to get famous or we see them in the paper, everybody wants to be their friend. Once they start to get notoriety, everybody wants to know who they are. Once they become famous, everybody's like, yeah, that's my boy. They probably called out to Bartimaeus, and there was one guy who ye just yelled at him five minutes ago. He was like, yeah, that's, yeah, Bartimaeus, yeah, that's my friend. We go way back. Well, you were just yelling at him five minutes ago. But, but people switch up. I have, I have an aunt who every time her daughter does something that's, uh, that's out of the ordinary, she looks at her daughter and goes, you've changed. She tells her daughter, you've changed. People do not like when you switch up. People do not like when you want breakthrough. People don't want to be attached to people who are Jesus freaks. People don't like people who want to serve God in a new level. People don't like people who are looking to sing a new song. People don't like you if you start to do things that are a little bit differently. But pardon me if I want a breakthrough. Pardon me if I want to sing a new song. Pardon me if I don't want to see Jesus work in my life. Pardon me if I want to encounter Christ for the first time in my life. And Bartimaeus said, even if you yell at me, I am going to encounter Jesus. And Jesus stopped. He stopped dead in his tracks. I said, call him over. Call him over. And Bartimaeus comes by and Jesus says, 50. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet, super excited, and came to Jesus. 51, Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. And the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. I want to see. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, because I want to see you. Barnabas was tired, seeing the same, waking up in the morning sitting by the roadside, as blind as he was, begging and said, no, I got a new song in my heart, Lord. I want to see. I want to feel. I want to live. I want to have a purpose. I want to know that you are good. I want to feel you. I want to, to understand who you are. I want you to manifest your power in my life, God. This is, this is I want somebody to know that, that, that Bartimaeus wanted to see and for those of you who want to see something new, you got to long after Jesus. You got to cry to the top of your lungs. Sometimes you got to lock yourself in the room and yell at the top of your lungs, God, I need you. Those of you who want to experience Christ's power in this season, sometimes it's taking that time to get down on your face, 
to get down on your knees and say, holy are you. I am nothing if it, if it is without you, God. And Bartimaeus was so prepared. And Jesus said, what do you want to do? He said, I want to see. I want to see. And Jesus says, go. Your faith has healed you. And immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus alongside the road. I love this particular part of the passage because I ask you this. Who's the first person that, that Bartimaeus saw when he received his sight back? I'll give you a sec. <laughs> the first person that Bartimaeus saw when he received his sight was Jesus. Okay? And there's a key principle in that. Because if we want healing, if we want deliverance, if we want to break up the cycle that is the monotony of boring and, and purposeless lives, it comes in God opening our eyes to see him. You see, a lot of us live our lives looking for freedom. And we go to God for freedom. Or we'll go to God looking for restoration. Or we're going to God looking for redemption. Or we're going to God seeking his grace. No, no, no. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness. And then all of these things will be added. What is it? What is it? All of the things that you're looking for. It comes when you seek first the face of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. You see, what happened? Bartimaeus his eyes were closed, and as soon as Jesus opened his eyes to see, he saw Jesus. And maybe you're not finding what you're looking for because you're looking for it, but you're not looking for him. There's a distinction. God wants you to look for him first before you start to look for all of these things. All of these things that you may be looking for are great. You want to change the world. You want to be somebody who's pleasing to your family. You want to make your family's name known. You want to be a person who's impactful in this world. God is saying, seek me first. Seek my face. Call out to me first. And then all of these things will happen. And, and, and how many times did, did, did Bartimaeus do it? He sought Jesus' face multiple times, multiple times. It wasn't just a one-time thing where he just cried out to God. No, he did it over and over and over again. Every time the crowd rebuked him, he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He sought the face of God, and the beauty of, of the repetition of praise is when we repeat our longing for God, when we, pre when we repeat our relationship with God, when we cultivate that, you will find that the more you repeat seeking after God and make it a habit, God will open up your eyes to see him, not it, to see him. It's not that God is giving you what you need. It's that God is what you need for whatever season that you're going through. Stop looking for things through God. Start looking for God and God will give you the things. And so as soon as Bartimaeus acknowledged that he needed God. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. That's when Jesus said, what do you want to see? And when he saw, he saw Jesus. That was the first thing he saw. And God will open our eyes if we're looking to find him. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, for I want to see you. Not it. Not the healing. I want to see you. And so I love what Bartimaeus does after. So, so his eyes are open, and he sees Jesus, and he does something very, very, very interesting. We were talking about repetition. The sermon, this message is entitled, The Revelation of Repetition. It says, it says, immediately he received his sight, and it says, he followed Jesus along the road. Step by step by step by step. He repeated the same steps of the army of the Lord. He decided that he was going to walk in step with Jesus, repeating the same steps, repeating. Simon says, y'all remember Simon says? 
When, when Bartimaeus received his healing, he went from worshiping God to repeating the path of God. It says in Scripture, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. It comes in the repetition of following and trusting in the Lord with all your heart. And that's what Bartimaeus learned. He learned that if I see Jesus and I repeat this new song, this new song where I'm worshiping, this new song where I'm crying out to my Savior, he will open my eyes, and when I open my eyes, I get to see him and walk alongside him. Remember in the story of Enoch? Enoch lived forever with God because it said he walked in step, repeating the steps of God as if God is the commander of the army, and I'm following his lead, marching alongside my God wherever he goes, wherever he leads, I'm following. And so... I conclude with this. Remember how we talked about how Bartimaeus' condition defined him in the beginning of this passage. Remember how I talked about that? Bartimaeus was known as blind, begging Bartimaeus. That was the condition. That was the thing that everybody knew him for. That was what everybody repeated to him. Your, you know your nickname is the thing that people repeat? Nobody repeats nicknames that are, that are, that are, that are not going to be used. So my nickname is Sana. I don't know who nicknamed me Sana. But when people started to repeat it, it became the nickname that I was affiliated by, right? You have your nickname. That came from somebody starting it, and everybody else repeated it. So for Bartimaeus, even us today, my, my, my Bible says blind Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus was known for being blind. People defined, somebody might have said blind Bartimaeus, and it continued on. It became a cycle, repeating it. Blind Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus, blind begging Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus. See, 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 see. But the beauty of God <laughs> is that whatever people define us as is not what God remembers us for, is not what God defines us as. So if somebody has called you fat, God does not call you that. If he calls you his child. If somebody has called you stupid, God calls you wise. If somebody calls you a fool, God calls you God calls you his own. If somebody calls you somebody who's worthless, God says you're worthy enough for me to die on the cross for your sins. If somebody says you can't do it, God says I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Come on, you need to understand that if somebody, just because somebody has defined you a certain way, that doesn't mean that you have to internalize it, make it your definition. I am who God says I am. I am who God says I am. Repeat this over your life. I am who God says I am. So if somebody says something about you, that's not how you're defined. You're defined by God, how God says you are. So, 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 so everybody, even, even the writers of the NIV called him blind Bartimaeus. I'm going to show you right here. My Bible literally says blind Bartimaeus receives his sight, okay? That's, that's literally what the writers of the NIV said, okay? <laughs> but, Je oh, man. But, but Jesus, but Jesus, you know, when you say but and then say Jesus, and you already know that Jesus is going to do something amazing. Jesus says, Jesus says, he says, what do you want, Bartimaeus? What do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus says, I want to see. And Jesus says, he says, he says, holy moly, I'm excited. He says, he says, he says, go. He says, your faith has healed you. So while you, 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 can, you at home can continue to call him ba blind Bartimaeus, but, but today I refuse to call him blind Bartimaeus because Jesus did not call him blind Bartimaeus. Jesus did not call him what his peers called him. Jesus did not call him what his parents called him. Jesus did not call him what the NIV translators called him. Jesus called him Bartimaeus. He said, he said, he said Bartimaeus is not a man who was blind, but Bartimaeus is a man of faith. He said, your faith has healed you. It wasn't my power that healed you. It was your faith. Jesus calls Bartimaeus faithful Bartimaeus. What's your definition of Bartimaeus? What, what have you internalized as your definition? Because people started repeating that nickname of who you are. I've got a whole bunch of nicknames. I'm not going to share them with you because some of them are actually very inappropriate because I don't even accept them anymore. But what have you called yourself? I'm dumb. I'm insufficient. I can't do this. What have you started to repeat? Because the enemy wants to sow these seeds of doubt into your life, that you can't do it. God's not using it. How could God ever use somebody like you who's stained and, and has a terrible past and, and cannot do this? No, no, no. God called Bartimaeus for his faith. 
And you, you are not defined by what the world calls you. You're not defined by what your peers call you. But if God has called Bartimaeus somebody of faith, you start to seek God today and you'll be known more for your faith than you will be known for your failures. And Bartimaeus was known as a person of faith. Here's my, here's my last, if you haven't heard anything I've had to say, remember this about the life of Bartimaeus and the life of somebody who's, who, who wants to change things and start a new cycle of repetition, okay? You are remembered by what you repeat. You are remembered by the things that you repeat. You are remembered, I'm going to say this again, by the things that you repeat. I remember my aunt, God rest her soul, who passed away a couple years ago. Every time she would leave me, uh, when we would, you know, hang out as a family, she would she would end end this by doing this. She'd give me a hug. And every time, I thought it was just for me, but she would say, she would say, I love you. And she would say, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and lift his countenance upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and give you peace. Every time. She gave me a kiss on the cheek and said this. Repetition. She would repeat it. Every time I saw her, every time I said goodbye, she would say the same thing over and over to me. She passed away. And uh, at her funeral service, I talked about how she would say this thing to me. And, uh, and, and she repeated it over and over and over again to me. And uh, that's what I said at her family service. And during her, you know, in the Samoan uh, funeral tradition, we have three, three services. So you have the family service, for, which is supposed to be for the family. But most of the people that are there are not family. But we'll get into that later. So there's the family service. And then there's the actual funeral service. And then there's the burial service. So the actual funeral service that had quite a few people. One person went up who was a coworker of hers and said that if she knew somebody, she would say the words, the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. She said that not just to me. I thought it was just exclusive to me. But she said that to so many people, meaning that I was her practice. She was repeating it to me so that she could repeat it to them. And what's crazy is that people who will never remember her for anything else in her life, people who will never remember how, mu- how kind she was to me, how great she raised her kids, how wonderful of a wife she was, how great of a person in ministry she was, they'll never, for- they'll never remember any of those things because they never knew her like that. But they will remember the Costco blessing. <laughs> because you're remembered by what you repeat. So if they didn't know anything else that she did, they remembered that every time they left her, she blessed them. And I'm here to tell you today that this cycle that you're living in throughout your life, it does not have to be the end. You're remembered by what you repeat. If you started a cycle early on in your life, most of us are young that are listening to me. That doesn't have to be the end of your story. That doesn't have to be the headline that governs the way or dictates the way that you live your life. You are called what God calls you. And so as you go throughout your life, I want you to remember this, that what you repeat, what you make habitual is what will govern your life and how people will remember you. So if you wake up in the morning with happiness and joy in your heart, Paul says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, make it a habit. Repeat it. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You will be remembered as somebody who is rejoicing. If, if you decide to show love to everybody that you encounter, if nobody ever remembers you for anything that you did, you will be remembered by the love that you show day in and day out. If you have an infectious smile and all you do is smile to people and all you do is encourage people and empower them, people will not remember you for the, as many things as you think they will, but they will remember you for how you encourage and empower people because you are known and remembered for what you repeat. Bartimaeus may be remembered by us for being blind, but he's known by Christ for his repeated faith over and over and over again. And this faith does not just extend to Bartimaeus, but we can bank and take it to the bank knowing that God has been faithful to us over and over and over and over again. He has been good to us over and over and over and over again. He has been kind to us over and over and over again. He has overfilled and overflowed our lives with goodness over and over and over again. We can remember God for his repeated goodness throughout our lives. Remember I talked about Psalm 150. It all came full circle. The reason why the people of Israel remember God and repeated praise him 13 times 
is because God had been faithful through the ages. There has not been a time in human existence where God has not been good to each and every one of us. Somebody who's struggling. I want, I'm going to sit down. There's somebody right now who is struggling with, with this year. You've been struggling with, with this broken repetition, and you're, you're sad and singing the same old song. Why me? Why this? Why that? Does it always have to be this way? I keep getting into these relationships, and people keep hurting me. I keep reaching out to people for help, but they keep hurting me. I keep trying over and over. Jesus, I keep trying to get in the pool, but every time I try, somebody goes in before me. I've been sitting on this roadside begging for so long. You've been singing the same song over and over and over again. And Jesus comes to shuffle everything up and give you a new song, a new song of hope, a new song of restoration, a new song of peace, a new song of breakthrough, a new song of renewal. This is your opportunity. This is your season to start something new. And it begins with allowing God to come into your heart. So I want to extend this invitation for somebody who wants to make a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. See, because remember, the breakthrough did not happen in Bartimaeus' life. Until he cried out and said, Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. In the same way, when you make this declaration after me to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, this is your opportunity to break the cycle that the enemy has had over you, to break the stronghold that the enemy has had over you, to break the bondage of sin that the enemy has constantly been repeating over and over in your life. And it's time for you to repeat a new song. And if you would like to make that decision to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, please repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I acknowledge that you died on the cross to forgive my sins and rose to give me life. I receive this gift of grace through faith. Come into my heart. Make me new. I'll follow you. This is my new beginning. Amen. Friends and family, if you have made that decision, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of hosts in heaven who are celebrating alongside with you. This is your new beginning. You start a new song. You start anew. This does not have to be the period where you go through the same cycles, but you can start a new cycle. Repeating the goodness of God over and over and over in your life, becoming a worshiper and following Christ with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. And so I say all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You do it again and again and again The God who never fails us
I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. I know, I know, said I know. I know the night won't last. Your word will come to pass. sing your praise again Jesus you're still enough keep me within your love my heart will sing your praise again your promise still stands your promise still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness i'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never failed me yet oh I know it's true all your promises are yes and amen. Oh, you come through time after time. And we shout out, I've seen you move. I've seen you move. You move the mountains. And I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way And I believe I'll see you do it again I've seen you move, you move the mountains And I believe I'll see you do it again You made a way when there was no way thank you for this time to worship. We thank you for delivering your word through the speaker. We thank you that we are a family in Christ. Use us, Father God, for your goodness. Help us to share 
your love and legacy with everyone we come encounter with. Bless those who are watching. Bless those who partook in tonight's service. Bless each and every one of us, Father God. Keep us safe until we are able to gather together again. May we lavish Christ's abounding goodness upon our family and friends. May all honor and glory come back to you in everything that we do. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.